Hi honeys, people often ask me to um, talk about shadow work, which is useful because it's one of those things that I probably couldn't be paid to stop talking about. I couldn't stop talking about it if I tried. Uh, probably couldn't stop talking about it if my life depended on it because it's been so integral to the plot in my own journey and I really am passionate about helping other people to um, find their own ways of, of entering into the shadowscape and kind of traversing across it. I often feel like I want to help people to understand how a process of shadow work can help you so much in your life. It can help you to evolve, it can help you to release, receive, it can help you to succeed, it can help you to unlock your potential. Um, but essentially what it can really help you to do more than anything else, the bottom line is that it helps you to have a decent relationship with yourself. It helps you to stop running from yourself, start facing yourself and actually become your own ally, your own supporter, respect yourself, love yourself and all the rest of it. Um, it's such an important part of the work that I do with my clients and I really feel that shadow work and self-love are actually cousins. They go hand in hand in a lot of ways. I really feel that and that's um, that's been really evident in my own journey. People have asked me to um, make some videos giving some tools to help people to start with shadow work or to progress with shadow work so I guess this video is just going to be one of a few where I kind of broach the subject of how exactly one begins with shadow work, what the processes are, what's available to you in terms of tools, like what is the spectrum. I'm going to start with stickers. Stickers are pretty integral to the plot of what it is to be me. Um, I use them in my diary to do my scheduling and stuff like that. I use them to kind of cheer up um, kind of rotors that I put on the wall. Um, I put them in letters. I kind of just stick them randomly around places. I use them to mark out stuff in books and I use them for shadow work. This is one of my Paper Chase sticker collections but as you can see it's kind of bulging out with other stickers that I've bought over time as well um, and, um, and in shadow work they can be really useful. So one of the key things that I would say is great when you are doing shadow work is journaling. Journaling for me is the last word, it's the bottom line and I think it's the same for a lot of people when it comes to shadow work, right? I think that for a lot of people journaling is the number one tool. If you were to strip everything else back then journaling would be kind of the, the, the one thing that you would choose to keep. Stickers are really good because I always say to people, there is no one piece of shadow content which exists in isolation. There just isn't, okay? Um, everything that you approach in shadow is going to be linked to other things and you will find that when you approach a piece of content in shadow, whether it's the expected destination or whether it's something that's really kind of blindsided you and you've gone, whoa, I didn't even realise that was there. Um, either way, you will probably find that that piece of content is attached to other pieces of content. So, for example, you might find some shadow content that you need to deal with in your relationship with your best friend. But actually, when you start to get into it, when you start to dig deeper, when you start to look at your patterns of resistance or passive aggression or whatever it is, um, abandonment, anything, you might realise that actually a lot of the stuff that's going on in your relationship with your best friend, which is fraught with tension and misunderstanding, actually has its genesis in your relationship with your mother. And actually you'll start to connect all of these dots and it will be really random and, and sometimes can be quite overwhelming. That's where stickers come in. So you're journaling, journaling, journaling. And maybe you've decided that you want to do some shadow work about your relationship with your best friend or maybe it just happened unexpectedly. But either way, you start to realise that you need to tackle some of the stuff in your relationship with your mum as a result of doing this work about the relationship with your friend. That's where the sticker comes in. So either you can put on the kind in the margin or on the side kind of thing um, where you've started writing about your best friend and the relationship. You can have a sticker or a post-it note or something of that nature and you can write tackle this in relation to, you know, mum or need to work on this in relationship with mum. Simple. Um, or you can put a sticker kind of in the text and put brackets around it and write something like next session relationship with mum. So you're keeping the shadow work sessions kind of a little bit, there's, there's lines of demarcation between them so you don't get completely overwhelmed and completely confused, right? So if other forms of content jump in and you think I need to do shadow work about that too, you can make a little note, a handy little kind of pointer and then when you go to do the next session maybe you can plan then to work on 
some of the stuff in your relationship with your mum if you still feel it's relevant and if you still feel that it's something that you want to do. So stickers can be so handy for that. They really just help you to highlight what else is coming in, you know, what's creeping into the peripheral vision of the shadow work that you maybe don't want to deal with at this moment in time, but that it needs to be got to at some other point. So what it does is it just, it kind of gives a little fun um, edge to the urgency when that new shadow content comes in and you think oh my god I need to I need to address that too you can just put a sticker on it you can also do things like have a notepad handy so you can have your main shadow work journal book or scrap paper whatever you're using and then you can have a little notebook which is kind of for overflow you know that brain dump kind of vibe where you uh, you feel something else coming in that you think there's shadow around that that's really in the shadows I need to deal with that but not now um, you can write it in your notebook as well so that's another handy little way of kind of dealing with that overflow as I like to call it you can kind of dump it somewhere and come back to it later and that's great too because it means that your future shadow work sessions are kind of fleshed out you know you kind of already have an idea in mind of, of what it is that you're going to want to tackle now, I'm talking about shadow work sessions, so I guess it's important for me to get clear on what I mean by that and why I'm using that terminology. For me, it's important when I'm doing any kind of dedicated or committed uh, shadow work over a period of time, either to do with a certain thing or just because I want to have a general psycho-spiritual detox. For me, I think it pays to organise sessions. I don't think shadow work is something that you just do as and when, you know, if you have a bit of time. Like, over time, shadow work becomes organic and it's something that actually comes into your mind's eye um, every day. So for me, for example, if I'm experiencing a judgment, I'll instantly open the shadow work um, kind of mindset. And I'll go, oh, I'm experiencing judgment. Let's bring that back to self. Let's reel that in and bring that back to self. But that's over many years of doing committed shadow work. Um, so I would say, actually, the shadow work button is kind of on ready alert all the time. And it will become that way for you too. Or if you have been doing shadow work for many years, then you already know what I mean. And it's, it's great. And it does help you to be a more evolved being in pretty much every relationship dynamic, in every situation, no matter how heinous, no matter how chaotic. Once you've got your shadow work button on ready alert, it's that's a good time in your life, that's a good time in your life. Um, but before that, when you're just starting out, I would say sessions are important and I still organise sessions now. My sessions will go on for between an hour and two hours and I will normally decide what I want to tackle before I get down to it. So for me, I just think sessions are important and I think for a lot of people, actually dedicating that time, carving out that time to do committed shadow work, just keeps you accountable. It just, um, it just helps you to have that point in the schedule where you're like, at that point, everything else is going to be pushed aside and it's going to be shadow work time. Exactly like you would do for laundry or whatever, but it's shadow work. Um, so yeah, for me, sessions are just integral to the plot. I would definitely recommend them no matter how far you are along on the journey of shadow work. Although, as I said, after a while, things will become a lot more automatic and you will use that guiding force of your understanding of shadow work all the time. But I still think it pays to have sessions where you really get down with yourself, you get grounded, you get centered, and that is the work that you're going to. That's where it is and nothing else. You know, turn the phone off. Don't make any other arrangements. Shadow work time, you know. And I think that's just something that you do for yourself that feeds your soul and continues to feed your soul no matter how many times you do it. Before you start your process of shadow work, I would recommend making a commitment to yourself. Show up for yourself and be really honest and make some kind of a written declaration. Um, to kind of confirm for yourself that your shadow work is not going to be conditional, that your growth is not going to be conditional. This is so important. Shadow work cannot work if you are not prepared to access all areas. And shadow work, when you get into it, is not as clear cut. It's not as cut and dry as you ever imagined it was before you started. Content will come up that you didn't expect would be there. Content will come up that you thought you'd already dealt with. Content will come up that you are kind of surprised to find because you didn't think it was really that important. Uh, you will find that certain things feel more amplified or seem more dramatic than you thought that they were. Things will surprise you in shadow work. And as I said, everything's linked too. So you'll start to realise that like you went into shadow work to think about maybe your relationship patterns, but then you realise actually there's a lot of stuff going on with your relationship with your boss and your career that is kind of mirroring that. And so you have to go deeper and deeper and you have to really kind of access all areas. Now, if you go into shadow work with this kind of hard and fast feeling that there are certain aspects of your life or certain aspects of your past that you are not prepared to look into, then you're actually 
really, you're shutting yourself off and you're cutting yourself short before you've even begun the work. And the work will be, I guarantee you, some of the most profound and important inner work you will do in your natural lifetime. So it's really important to come to it with that attitude of openness and that attitude of readiness to accept that things are going to come up that maybe you weren't expecting. I also want to stress for the record that trepidation is completely normal. <laughs> if you have trepidation, it means that you are aware that it's going to be profound and you respect the nature of what shadow work is. That's my honest opinion. Um, if you are absolutely but crazy terrified and every time you think about shadow work, you get shudders up your spine, that's a different thing. Um, but trepidation, trepidation is normal, it's healthy, it's par for the course. And it's something that I think is just a representation of the fact that you know the work is going to be serious and that you are going to bring serious things to the work when you do it so I think it's a good thing. Scrapbooking or making art is another way of expressing what is within the shadow, expressing how you feel about certain aspects of shadow content. Um, remember when we look at shadow work we're looking at things that are repressed within you, things that make you feel ashamed, things that make you feel angry or sad, memories that you would rather kick to the back of the closet than actually look at, um, skeletons in the closet, family dynamics that you feel may have shaped you in a negative way, toxicity that exists in your life, you're looking for the root causes of it, you're looking for the stem of it. So when you're doing those things, it can get quite complex and quite abstract. Now, if you're not somebody who works overtly with words as a medium of expression in your life, if you are more visual or you are more musical or you are more kind of, you know, audio visual, if you like, then it's OK to do things like scrapbooking or making music or anything of that nature is absolutely fine. And I quite enjoy doing scrapbooking and collage in relation to shadow work, too. It helps me to reach some parts that are kind of less accessible and it helps me to think about things in a new way, because for me, words are very much at the surface of who I am. They're very, very available to me. Actually, they're maybe slightly too available to me. <laughs> I'm sure my boyfriend would say they are. Um, but so for me, when I'm scrapbooking, when I'm just cutting words out and pictures, and I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for, I kind of know what it is that I'm trying to define or express, but I, I kind of am looking, rifling through all these pictures and words and stuff, then it actually makes me thread connections that I hadn't made. And that's really exciting. So that's something to think about. Different ways that you can express yourself in shadow work. Different ways that you can bring the complexity of those feelings to the surface and actually look at them in the light. I wanted to touch briefly on the value of memory work um, as part of your shadow work process. If you are processing memories that are difficult for you, if you're processing memories that you feel that you want to revisit because you're wondering whether or not they had a very direct effect on whatever is going on now, if you're processing memories that are to do with linking up with your sense of childhood conditioning and how that affected you, all of that stuff is majestic in shadow work. Go to it, go into it, go deep, deep into it. And with memory work, what I would say is, first of all, revisit the memory through your own eyes from that first person perspective. And second of all, revisit the memory through the pane of glass, as I like to call it, from that second person perspective where you are actually watching it from behind a pane of glass. You're watching the scene unfold and you're actually looking at it as though the younger version of yourself is actually somebody different. And that can actually produce this two le level effect where, first of all, you allow yourself to relive what you actually went through and it actually kind of takes you back to that raw emotion so that you can process anything that wasn't processed at the time. This is really part of healing work. This is really something that you can allow yourself to release. You can allow yourself to fully go there from the safety of where you are in your life now. A lot of stuff gets left over. When something sad happens, when we feel abandoned, when something traumatic occurred to us, um, you know, anything like that, loss, uh, disappointment, lack of achievement, fear, uh, violence. When we relive those things, we actually find a lot of the time that we can process emotions and release emotions that we would not allow ourselves to release and process at the time, either because we weren't emotionally mature enough to do so, because we didn't feel safe to do so. There are a myriad of reasons and it's that stagnant stale emotion and it kind of sits like stagnant water at the bottom of the psyche and actually when you go back and you relive your memories through that first person perspective and you take yourself as close to how it really happened at the time and how you really felt at the time as possible then you will find that actually sometimes it's like hitting oil that stuff just comes up and that's a really big cleansing in a really short space of time so if you feel safe to do that then do that 
And that second kind of layer is where you go through the memory again, but you go through it as though you are behind the pane of glass and you're watching it unfold. And that gives you that sense of dispassionate, observational perspective. And that can be very interesting too. And that's where you get into stuff like gestalt modalities, gestalt mindset. For example, if you want to go back to the memory of the last argument you had with your boyfriend before you broke up and saw each other for the last time you can first of all relive the memory from that first person perspective and maybe you'll find afterwards that you will cry or maybe you'll find afterwards that you will feel like smashing something against the wall you'll feel really angry and a lot of that anger that you thought was spent or that you thought maybe didn't need to occur will come out you know emotions that actually did sit under for one reason or another may rise to the surface equally you may just feel like writing a lot you may feel like expressing a lot you may feel like picking up the phone and talking to somebody and then when you go through that second layer where you're behind the pane of glass, that's where the gestalt thing happens. And that's interesting because actually what happens then is you consider how it might have occurred from the other perspective. And shadow work is not about looking out, out at what other people are thinking and feeling, etc. It's not about that. It's about you. It is about reeling everything back in, back to self. However, that gestalt aspect of things where you allow yourself to step into somebody else's shoes and you allow yourself to see how your own perspective could have potentially been distorted or amplified or just heightened in that moment and how everything maybe wasn't exactly as you thought it was at the time. That can release a lot of shadow content too. That can make you think things like, okay, so why did I think in that moment that it was like that? Why were those emotions prevalent? And why were those other emotions suppressed? Why did I react that way instead of this way? You know, what's that got to do um, with what's deep within me that I don't want to face? So there's that two-tone kind of energy with memory work. And this is probably um, one of the most valuable tools that I want to put out there into the world and impart to you guys is this this two-tone energy work. This is something that I've been doing for a really long time. I, energy work? Uh, memory work. Something I've been doing for a really long time and it really helped me in my own journey. So um, I hope that as many as possible of you can try it if you feel like there are mem memories that need to be processed during the shadow work journey and you've not been sure how to do it. Try it from that two-layer perspective. See what happens. See how deep you can really go with that and how much you can bring to consciousness. I want to stress that a great deal of shadow work is about bringing stuff to consciousness. Shadow work is not about banishing. It is not about deleting content. It's about bringing it to consciousness so that it no longer has control over you, okay? That's the point of it. The idea is that once things are brought to consciousness and we accept them about ourselves and we love ourselves um, for all that we are and we kind of see ourselves in the light rather than pushing things into the darkness, those pieces of content that were pushed into the darkness before um, will, will no longer have control, they'll no longer have precedence, they'll no longer be domineering, they'll no longer be malicious in the way they operate, you know, because we'll be able to see them. And that's really it, and I think that's something that a lot of people get confused about with shadow work, it's really not about deletion, and it's really not about um, dismantling, it's not about dissolving, it's not about carving yourself up into the shape that you wish to be it's not about that at all and that's something that I will say so with memory work what we're really doing a lot of the time is we're just bringing more to consciousness and once it's it's within consciousness you'll realize everything will start to change everything will start to change Meditation is a very good thing to do as part of shadow work um, and I'll probably go into this in a separate video but I do feel like first of all meditation before starting a shadow work session can be important but also meditation is one of those things where a lot of people feel like when you meditate you're supposed to push emotions back, you're supposed to resist any presence of emotion coming into the periphery like that's not what it's about. But actually a lot of emotion comes forth during meditation once you get into that place where you're actually um, aligning with yourself and with your intention for meditation and what you wish to achieve through meditation that's when emotions actually sometimes crowd in and the point is to give them that space and don't be in resistance to them I always say no mind is like the blue sky and thoughts are like the fluffy white clouds going past the point is not to push those clouds to the side the point is to let them pass they're part of the blue sky and they will pass and then the blue sky will return unhindered and then the clouds will come and then they'll pass and then the blue sky will return this is the whole point of it right until in the end all you can see is the blue you've become one with the blue you know 
and that's how I think of meditation. So quite often emotions are processed in that moment of stillness that you haven't been giving yourself. I think that's an important thing to know. I'd really love to know from those of you who have been um, embarking on a shadow work process, either through watching my videos or you know, for years now you've been doing it, you're a really old hand. I'd love to know, do you include meditation in your shadow work process and how do you use it and how do you feel that it benefits you? Like I said, this could be a video all by itself, all on its own, so I won't go into it into too much depth, but meditation is certainly a tool and it's certainly a tool with more than one purpose. It's not just to ground and centre and clear yourself out before you start or after you finish. You know, it's much more meaningful and all-encompassing and holistic than that, I would say. Analysing and interpreting your dreams while you are going through a committed practice of shadow work is important because when you're bringing that shadowy stuff to consciousness during the daytime, then your dreams will have comments to make on that. Those parts of your psyche that you don't access during waking time will comment on that. So be ready with a notebook in the morning to record anything, even if it's just a few quick notes, a few key words, anything like that will be helpful. And remember, it's so important to remember that you are the only person who signs off on your interpretation of a dream, okay? Jung said that the, you know, the only person that understands the dream is the dreamer, the, only the dreamer, no one else. So the really important thing to note is that if friends want to pass comment on what the dream might have been about, if you purchase um, a dream analysis reading, I know I do dream analysis readings, anything like that, if you want to ask a professional to maybe chime in on what they think, if you want to tell your analyst or therapist or counsellor, whoever you go and see, that's fine. All of their opinions and comments are fair game, but you have to sign off on what you really think the dream means. And until you have decided that you agree with an interpretation of your dream, then the interpretation itself is not correct. That's the rule okay that's the Jungian rule so that's something I would say um, dream interpretation dream analysis go to it when you are in that process of shadow work on a weekly or daily or monthly basis that will be the time when your dreams will offer up so much treasure so much gold so much to work with if you are a witch, if you perform magic, if you perform ritual, anything that you would do in sacred space, if you are used to carving out sacred space for yourself, I would argue that spending time in sacred space is incredibly illuminating for shadow work. Um, really just moving all of those energies that you don't want out of the equation and sitting within the dome, the little biosphere, the little universe that you've constructed out of energetic frequencies that you hold sacred, that's good stuff when it comes to shadow work. And you know what, don't even take a journal in there, don't even take anything in there. Just see actually, in the first instance at least, what happens when you create your own um, energetic kingdom, your cathedral, if you like, of sacred space. Just sit there, just sit there and see what happens. Um, sometimes I lie down in the fetal position actually in sacred space when I'm doing shadow work and that can bring up a lot of interesting feelings. Um, once you've engineered, once you've delicately constructed in your witchy way the energies that you want and you've held, you hold them high and you're holding your vibration high and then you just lie there in the fetal position and you just wait, you just surrender you surrender to shadow and you trust yourself in that process and you know that nothing can touch you that you didn't want to touch you you know it's all good the space that you've created will hold whatever comes forth that's a really intense experience you know and I've done that many times and I will do that many times in my life and it's it's meaningful it's very profound Ritual is a really important part of the shadow work process. You can do ritual to release content that you have um, kind of worked through and you kind of want to um, put that to rest and move on to the next thing. You can do ritual to celebrate breakthrough. You can do ritual to ease difficulties, to ease blocks during shadow work. I really think ritual and the process of committed ongoing shadow work go hand in hand. You know, think about the different ways that you can use ritual. Think about the different ways that you want to be present and use ritual to actually enhance your experience of shadow work and get you through those times where you may need that extra assistance from what I would call the symbolic mind, the you know, symbols from the collective unconscious, what can you construct and build ritualistically that will move you onto the next plateau or let you release what can now be released. You can use tarot cards, oracle cards, angel cards, all of that good stuff for challenging your perceptions, uh, going deeper with content that you've found, examining content that you've found from different kind of um, angles, you know, really challenge your perception of what's going on by drawing tarot cards and allowing the tarot cards to kind of um, 
push you to examine things differently, ask you to move out of your own comfort zone. That's what shadow work is all about and, and tarot helps with that so much. So using tarot, tarot is an incredibly good tool for shadow work and I will link below to two videos that I have made um, that are chock full of spreads that you can use as part of your shadow work journey so you're welcome in advance <laughs> and um, and use them you know go to them and don't forget you can use oracle cards if you prefer them you can use any system that you prefer it's really important that you're comfy with it you know don't be forcing yourself to use the right away if you don't like the right away you go with what works for you you know um, and design your own spreads and remember you can just pull one card if you if you feel like maybe there's a deeper layer that you need to get to with something or if a piece of content pops into your mind and you really just want an initial kind of of hook to hang your understanding on uh, so that you can burrow deeper anything like that tarot is a religion to me it is a religion that deck is my teacher it's my guru you know um, and it can be that for you in shadow work really let it be your aid let it be an archetype all on its own you know a collection of all the archetypes rolled into one 78 card gift for you to use in shadow work or you know oracle whatever you want to do whatever you want to use i'm a huge fan of oracle decks and have loads of oracle decks too so um so yeah make use of the cards definitely make use of the cards that's something i would always always say post-it notes are good for mapping the shadow very very good if you want to do a prison break situation and do it on a wall you can or if you just want to do it temporarily on a table and take a photo of it uh, post-it notes are great for just mapping out clusters of different pieces of content, associations that seem to go together, things that you want to tackle in tandem with each other, things that you're more comfortable with, less comfortable with, shadows in the masculine, shadows in the feminine, um, you know, all that kind of thing, taking a look at, you know, shadows that you feel you maybe got from your father's side of the equation and your mother's side of the equation, or um, shadows in the seven chakras, be experimental, go nuts, you know, that's part of it. Use post-its to your advantage, they really can help you with that visual representation that you sometimes need. Um, map the terrain. Um, really understand that, that your shadow is a terrain. You know, I work on something called the energetic shadow mapping process and I call it that because it is a terrain and yet the map itself is not the territory which is another exciting thing about it. Um, so I just want to end by saying post-it notes are your friends. Please do use them. Please do make you all. Oh, I've, got, I've got a block of post-it notes right here. Look at that, always on hand. So you can't say that I don't practice what I preach. I really hope that these tools which I have lovingly given from my heart can reach you wherever you are on your shadow work journey and um, that they can enhance your journey and they can crystallise your journey and that they can make your journey all the more worthwhile. So, so very much love, blessed be.